Today we're going to be talking about Colin Kaepernick and his GQ Citizen of the Year selection. We will also be talking about a movie coming out by Nintendo possibly, but first, what happens next in this video? I have a feeling this isn't going to end well. I feel bad for the little guy. So what happens next? A. He comes out demolished. B. He comes out fully dressed and ready to eat. Or C. He gets a good cleaning, waiting to be let free into the wild. Welcome to the crossover. I'm Jesse Valdez, alongside with Cedric Williams. <laughs> Did you see? I mean, what do you think about that video? I, I thought, haven't. honestly, I thought it was gonna come out completely like an atomic bomb went off, or, <laughs> or just like something weird. I don't know. I, I was. I actually hoping it came out fully dressed, you know. <laughs> a couple lemon slices, some parsley, rightly seasoned. You know, the eyeball still poking out a little bit, you know, just to give it that, hey, I'm still here look. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I honestly thought, because they put the whole fish in, I didn't know if it was alive or not. I swear I saw the tail flap a little bit. Goes in, I literally thought it was going to be like a meat grinder, where you grind the right. meat and it just comes out like... Like in the butcher shop at the grocery yeah. store. <laughs> but it came out fully gutted. Fully gutted. It wasn't even scaled. It or? was scaled. It looked like it was scaled. He rubbed it to show that it was smooth, like <laughs> smooth as eggs. Like it was. I can't believe. Like I definitely have to get one of those. So this is like a. This is something that a fisher, every fisher's dream to have is something. Oh, just throw it in. You know. Yeah. It may not come out with with lemon and some seasoning on it, but it and comes pretty dang close. It's gutted. I don't like. There has to be like some little Martians or aliens in there. Inside there working inside some hamsters. Like, working yeah, there. like to cut it precisely, yank everything out. All right, he's good, and then slide it back out. <laughs> That's so fun. I don't know if you can get this at your local, you know, grocery store or not. Right. I mean, or, or a sportsman or a, like a sportsman's sportsman's retail play. shop. Yeah. yeah. But I mean. It'd be worth a shot to like check it out. I mean, that was that was pretty cool. I'm asking, especially Santa. for all you fishers. Yeah, Santa, um, I'm asking Santa Wolf for one for sure. <laughs> and hopefully, you don't get the rip off version where it does come out like an atomic bomb right. or meat grind. <laughs> all it is is scales and tails and guts all in one, like sushi. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk about Nintendo. Yes. Nintendo is coming out with a new movie. Apparently, it's not fully 100% guaranteed, but they, there's some rumors of Nintendo coming out with this movie with Universal. And I mean, just a little backstory, Nintendo did this way back uh, in the 90s. 93, you know? I think it was. Yeah, 1993 with the Super Mario's film. Uh, I mean, it had some actors that had, uh, let me see real quick, Bob Hoskins uh, as Mario, mm -hmm. and then uh, right. As Luigi, it had John Le Leguizamo. Le John Leguizamo. And he's been in a few things, right? He's been in a number of things. I mean, I might tell my age, but he was in uh, Tu Wong Fu and, you know, Summer of Sam. And he's done, you know, uh, stand up on Broadway and things like that. I mean, he's, there's a number of films that he's done. Um, so he's an accomplished actor. Oh, right on. So, I mean, in that sense, you, they had some good actors, but right. apparently this. This movie wasn't awesome. <laughs> it wasn't great at all. It got like four out of ten. They had like a forty-eight million dollar budget. Right. It, it, it didn't go anywhere. It was horrible, and it was it, it was live action. It wasn't like like the cartoons. 
because I, I know there was like Mario cartoons and right, right. Zelda cartoons. It wasn't animated at all. It was a legit, you know, right. movie. And it didn't do well. Maybe like they tried to follow maybe the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In a sense, it kind of reminded me of right. that. Uh, as a kid, I liked it because I was a little kid. I didn't know what was going on. I just right. thought it was Mario on there. So, I mean, we don't know what they're doing with the next one. Is it going to be live action again or is it going to be kind of animated and cartoonish? Right. You know, so I'm kind of excited for it if it's not like what it... I mean, if it's what it was in 93, then I guess that's not going to be Let's hope not. A good move for Nintendo. Cinematography has come a long way since 93, since the last time they tried this. So hopefully, we're in 2017, going into 2018, it's going to be a lot better than... That's very true. So look forward to that. Um, it's not 100% guaranteed, but then again, there's that chance that it will for sure you know, come out to a movie theater near you. Right. Uh, let's talk about something a little controversial, and we're talking Colin Kaepernick. Yes, Colin Kaepernick. Love him or hate him? I mean, there's two different ways we can approach this and look at this guy. Yeah, everyone or a lot of people dislike him because of his kneeling uh, during the national anthem and, you know, the trend that he started within the Oh, NFL. it's a craze. Right, it's a craze. And what people aren't looking at or paying attention to is why he started doing this because of the injustices, you know, with police and, you know, minorities and things of that nature. So looking at that, this is a positive guy, never been in trouble, never abused a woman, never had a DUI, never done drugs, none of those things. Um, and GQ named him citizen of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Named him citizen of the year instead of JJ Watt, who people were upset that he wasn't named Citizen of the Year because he helped, you know, raise over $30 million for hurricane victims, which is commendable. And, you know, that's a good thing. Keep in mind, he also had help raising over $35 million uh, to help these hurricane victims. Now, what has Kaepernick done? Kaepernick has donated $900,000 of his own money to, you know, certain charities uh, of that nature. 2016, he donated his jersey sales uh, revenue to you know people in need. Mm -hmm. He sent over a million dollars worth of food uh, to families in Haiti who needed it. I mean, this guy hasn't done anything off of the books, nothing illegal. He's done everything in a peaceful way. It's just sad to see that people don't actually listen to the message um, and what this guy actually does in his day-to-day -day life. So the difference is, I mean, this is this money is coming out of his own wallet. It's not like you mentioned, JJ uh, Watts. He uh, he also funded money, but he had help right. funding and don't getting that money. It wasn't right. completely his money coming out of his his pocket. Right. Um, but the thing is, is all we get is this backlash of right. Colin Kaepernick. He's he's a piece of crap. He's He's trash, you know. I mean, he, he, he might be trash on the field. I don't know, but <laughs> but, but for in a sense of uh, the media right. is blowing this up into something that it doesn't need to be. Right. You know and they're blowing I mean? it up, and people commenting on, you know, which is fine. Everyone has a right to comment and like or dislike. But if you've never given to an organization or to help, you know, with hurricane victims or any disaster relief victims, or helped with displaced families or battered women or children or anything like that, then that doesn't really leave much room, you know, mm -hmm. for those people to say anything negative against a guy who, who's out here, you know, preaching or showing all positive. Well, the big backlash is the kneeling. Right. Why did he kneel to begin with? For he, this to be even become this crazy right. that it has been. Well, when he started his, you know, his, his cause or fight for his cause, he started sitting through the national anthem. And, you know, he spoke with a, a certain uh, veteran, military veteran, mm -hmm. um, who was actually a Special Forces Navy SEAL, I believe he was. And he, he asked him, or actually told him that it would be better, or it would, it would come off more appreciative and given, you know, knowledge to the, the veterans that have, you know, passed on or lost their lives if he knelt because I'm a veteran myself, so I know that there are certain things that we do. We kneel to, you know, to, to 
give respect to mm -hmm. our fallen comrades and things like that. So that's how he even came to kneeling for the anthem instead of sitting. Mm -hmm. um, and even even after that, people don't people don't want to hear so, that part about it. So do you see kneeling as a sign of disrespect to our country or no? Me personally, as a veteran, I know there's veterans out there who, who see it another way and some who agree with me. He never came out, no, none of these guys ever came out and say, hey, we're kneeling to disrespect the flag. We're kneeling because we're disrespecting the national anthem. We're kneeling because, you know, we're disrespecting the United States of America. That is never what they said. They said they're kneeling to bring focus to what their cause is, which is, you know, minorities being mistreated or people being mistreated and killed by uh, police all around the country and things of that nature. So in that sense, I don't have a problem with it. Being that the reason that military personnel go overseas, you know, to fight for these liberties and things like that yeah. are for freedom of speech. Well, bottom line, I mean, the people, you know, there's all these people, they, they fought for our freedom. They fought, they fought for our right to stand or to nail exactly bottom line right you know what line. i mean so i mean it's just really it's really crazy to see how the, the mass media tries to twist that around a little bit i mean who knows i mean it it, it could be uh an agenda for the nfl in a sense of giving them publicity you know what i mean right. i mean they're right they, they've been they've had some numbers lower than other seasons I well mean, <laughs> i don't know i mean the president of the united states keeps wanting to come out and say that the numbers in the nfl are dropping when in all reality, the numbers have risen mm. this whole time. But he well, after the fact of all these scenarios happening, right. though. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And it, I mean, it's the same thing how Papa John's tried to say that they've lost all this money, but yet Pizza Hut will tell you how they've increased revenue during mm. all this. So it, it all depends on who you ask and what their platform is and what they want to get across. At the end of the day, it's peaceful. We need to keep everyone being peaceful. It's fine for everyone to have their own opinions and thoughts. That's what makes us great Americans. And I mean, we'll definitely have more spills, you know, throughout each show, especially on the NFL. So I mean, we won't be we won't be too worried about uh, running out of ideas with that. Oh no, not at all. But let's go ahead and I mean, end the show. I mean, we'll have more of this stuff coming throughout the week. Make sure to follow our page on Facebook at Media Crossover, uh, where you know. You'll see posts through all of our admin, all of our MCE team that admin and edit the page, including us too. Um, besides that, I mean, I guess that's a wrap, right? It's a wrap. I'm Jesse Valdez. This is Cedric Williams, and we are plugging you into everything that matters.